just hit record. Here we go. Unmuted and I'm going to spotlight you, Mel, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mel. Um, I'm a qualified national marketing director. And how long have I got, Ruth? Because I can talk for like hours. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a half hour. Okay. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I flew out to NMD school. So to be uh, chosen to go to NMD school, you have to be SSC 10 club minimum um, or higher. And literally it's a weekend away where the company pays for everything. It, I don't think I pulled my card out once. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. um, wined, dined, and you get to hang out with um, some of the movers and shakers of the business, but also some of the pioneers of the company as well. So people like Steve Coulter, Mark Dragon, um, we had Danny Martin there, uh, Lisa Evan, uh, Linda Evenden, uh, James. So we had an array of people, Celine as well, which I think you guys have just had Celine for a little while. Is that right? Oh, yep, we have. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. She's so great. So really what, it, what it's about is um, setting that tone, I guess, for, you know, the SSC 10 club and above. So what your days need to look like from there, um, the things you need to nut out and really planning out NMD um, and how that's going to happen. So for me, um, I actually locked in my fifth SC on the tarmac mm -hmm. as we were flying out of Brisbane um, yeah. for NMD. So uh, that was really exciting. Um, you know, I guess really to be able to be part of a company that grabs your hand and walks you to the finish line um, is amazing. I don't know anyone else in a traditional business that could do something like that. Um, so really I soaked up everything. I have pages and pages and pages of notes. So I'm just going to share with you guys uh, some of those. Um, now, my heading I put was what makes a great leader because for me, when I came into this business, I wanted to be that person that walks into the room and people go, you know what, because of you, I didn't give up. Wow. So, you know, I wanted to give further than my team, you know, further than um, just Team TNT, which is us here in, um, in Queensland. You know, I wanted to be able to give to the entire Juice Plus community, whether or not it's franchisees or customers, um, and, you know, really have a massive, massive impact. So I was lucky enough when I came into the company, um, I went, sorry, my cat's in here. Um, I went to Nashville uh, and I was lucky enough to get to hang out with Lauren Slocum um, for a day or so, which was absolutely awesome. She lights up my life that woman um so i really i guess look up to her uh, a lot if i could be half the woman that lauren slocum is um i'd be very very stoked um with that sort of success so one of the things i wrote down is um you need to see people within your team within your business um as successful before they do so really I guess, you know, being that dream keeper, uh, really loving on them where they're at and stepping through the process with them. Uh, so, you know, what you might find is that some of us come into the business and, and smash it to pieces. Some will come in and take it a little bit slower and that's okay. It, it, it doesn't matter. This is your journey. Um, now, basically, you know, Jess saw success in me before I did in myself. So on the days where doubt and fear kicked in, so Jess treated me as though NMD was done. She always, always has. So when you've got that belief in yourself, you wake up every day and you go to work. Every single day, it doesn't matter, and I say this to, to everyone, I have shown up in my business for 14 months solid. There has not been a day off. 
Now, some people don't like the idea of that. Uh, it's definitely nothing like full-time work. I would much rather do my Juice Plus business for 14 months straight than actually hold a, a J-O-B and be away from my children. Um, so really, I guess, um, you know, the, the fear and doubt is going to kick in, but having that person that is right behind you cheering for you uh, really makes a massive difference. Uh, like I just said before, stay in line. So I liken it a lot to the supermarket. If you go to the supermarket, you've got your hands full, okay, you get to the checkout and you forget something and you get out of line to go and get it. When you come back, you've got to line back up again, okay? It's going to be harder because the line's going to be longer. There's going to be more people waiting. And, you know, very similar to your business. If you step out of line, when you get back in, it's going to be a little bit harder because the people that have been watching your journey might see that you lost a little bit of belief. Um, they might see that you were quiet when usually you were all over Facebook. And you don't want people to start doubting you, your business, the product, those sorts of things. So it's really important, even if you have a bad day, you need to make sure that you're still showing up on social media if that's how you're building your business. Um, and then go and have your bad day. Go fire yourself and rehire yourself the next day. But just don't let the world see, really. I, I guess is the, the most raw way to say it is just you know, put on that front because it's only a bad day. It's not a bad life. So, you know, you're going to get back on the bandwagon. Um, now, the other one is reframing pain. So when, you know, the fear or the doubt kicks in or when we get the haters um, or, you know, anyone that's trying to rain on your parade, literally... We do. We go, oh, wow, this hurts. How, what do I do? Where do I go from here? I think a really powerful thing that I've been able to do is reframe that into, wow, here's some growth. Because right after that pain, something new would have happened. You would have done something new. You would have felt something new. You would have tried something new. And a lot of you will find, you know, that fear and doubt kicks in when you go to present for your first time, whether it's on a Zoom or at a live event. But right after you've done it is when that growth happens. And all of a sudden, it's just not so scary anymore. I've just had um, a girl that I brought into the business, a friend of mine, and four months ago she wouldn't even get on a call. And I sat at our Sunday event just gone and watched her stand up in front of a crowd of 50 or 60 people with no care in the world. She had her head up and her shoulders back and that conviction was amazing. It was as if she'd done it a hundred times. So the growth came right after her pain from her reframing that, oh, my God, this is too hard, it's scary, into, wow, let's do this. Some cool stuff's about to happen. So that's been really powerful for me um, with all challenges. And I've actually got this little card here, which just reminded me. It says, view obstacles as opportunities. If you are confronted by challenges in your professional or personal life, you don't let these so-called challenges hold you back in any way. You deal with them and grow as a result. Um, I got given that card uh, from Caitlin Field, actually, uh, at a women's empowerment event uh, earlier in the year. And I just thought, wow, that is so true. Um, you know, it's about just shifting your mindset. So, um, what's, what's some other ones we got here? Um, okay, so the other one is not playing the beat up game. <coughs> so use it as inspiration, okay? How did they do what they did? <clears throat> now I know for me, even where I'm at in the business now, I still, every now and then, <clears throat> I will go, oh, Wish I could have done it in nine months. But you have to stop that 
it's not good. Um, you know, I think there's been lots of times in the last couple of months uh, where I've had to step back and say, well, well, just chill out, okay? You're doing okay. Um, and I think, you know, when you're really hard on yourself and you expect really good results um, and you work really hard, this is the type of mind frame that's really easy to slip into. So rather than thinking, why can't I be like that, change your mindset to how did they do what they did? What can I do better? How can I play bigger? You know, am I complaining about results I'm not having from work I'm not doing? So that, um, and, and really, you know, how can you learn from them? Whether you reach out and say, hey, oh my God, I'm so blown away by your journey. You know, can you share with me your DMO? Don't be scared to reach out. It doesn't matter who they are in this business. I can almost guarantee you uh, that no one is going to tell you to go away. Um, you know, just reach out and, you know, find that person that you really resonate with and roll with that. So. The other one is the 80, 80 15, 5 rule. Now, 80% of the people in your business will earn between $500 and $1,000 a month. Okay, 15% will earn between $5,000 and $3,000 per month. And 5% will earn $10,000 per month. And this is obviously, you know, you've got to remember that we're at NMD school. So most of these people are SSC 10 club and above. Okay, so they've, they've really started to have a, a booming little business happening and lots of growth. Um, so, you know, for some people um, across the board, even in my team, when I did this call for them, they're like, what? I've got no one in my team that earns $5,000 a month. But it's coming because you're going to stay in line. So... Really loving on your 80%. Now, I learned this the hard way, the really hard way. And that was if you weren't moving at the speed of light, you weren't serious. That was really unfair um, and definitely not something uh, that I knew I was doing. But it was about stepping back and loving on people where they're at. So... 80% of my business is made up of people who have come into the business, um, they have an amazing customer base, uh, you know, we're talking 35, 40 of their own customers, self-qualified every single month since they could. Um, now, think about if those people weren't in my business, that would be a massive, massive chunk of my business gone. There would have been no way that QNMD would have happened that fast because the 80%, you know, they're the ones that are in there and just ticking away all the time. They might not show up to every single Zoom call, but they're out there talking about the product all the time and always building their business. Um, so really have a think about who your 80% is um, because these people will be with you until the end or well, not the end, you know, but let's say until NMD, um, you know, maybe beyond that. So really, you know, ha make sure you're checking in with them. That was my biggest downfall was I was like, oh, they're fine. They know what they're doing. Um, you know, they're putting five or ten customers a month on and self-qualifying. They definitely know what they're doing. But, you know, that little voice message saying, you know what, babe, you've got the highest customer acquisition within my business and you've been self-qualified for nine months straight, just make sure you pop some shampers tonight and congratulate yourself. That makes people feel really special. So just making sure that you're checking in with your 80%. And then your 15%, obviously, um, your 15%, they're running away. <coughs> they're bringing on a team and they're building. So your 15%, like I said, will earn anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000 a month. Okay, and then you've got 5% of your business who are earning 10000 or more. Now, it's really important, you know, your 15 and your 5, that's only making up 20% of your business. Okay, so it's really important. I guess your 18, 15, 5 rule is really just showing you how important everyone that's doing a little bit is as well as the couple that are doing a lot. 
So um, the other thing is work with the people within your business that deserve it, not the ones that need it. Okay, I got caught up in this again. I've really, I tell you, my business has just been an absolute um, up and down mess, I could say sometimes, when it came to, you know, moving so fast and how do you manage that, you know? No one really, um, I guess, you've always got people there showing you how to build your business and, and how to keep going, but... Um, how much time do you put into someone, I guess, was where I sort of got stuck. So working with the people that deserve it, they're the ones where you say, okay, um, you know, you might give them a challenge to do and they go and do it and they come back and say, okay, I did it, what next? Or the ones who are lining up the three-way calls, the ones who are coming to the events and bringing people, those are the people that you need to work with. There will be a few people within your business that want your time, okay? I'm not saying don't spend time with them at all, okay? What we say is go and have a cup of tea with them and then keep running with the runners. So it's just about not spending too much time in that sandpit. Give them, you know, the information that they need and really I, this is going to enable them um, to emerge as a leader. Because you're going to say things like, they're going to say, oh, what's the code for tonight's Zoom? I don't know. Where would you find that? You know, I remember Jess doing it to me and I did swear under my breath at her. I just went, oh, my God, you did not just do that to me. So, but I went and looked for it. And then after that, I didn't ask her again because I knew that the resources and the tools are there. So go and have a look first. If you can't find it on, you know, loveteamspirit.com or any of the team pages, um, in your starter pack, in your welcome email, all of those places on the newsletter, then ask the question. Um, so that was another valuable lesson. Um, our, day, our job is to engage and excite. So get people excited within your team about challenges. Because with that challenge is going to come that little bit of fear and then is going to come that growth. And even if, you know, I've, I've got a couple of girls who I just set a challenge today, even if they don't hit that target, you know, or finish that challenge, they have believed in themselves a little bit more today than what they did yesterday. So that's over time going to make a huge impact on their business as well. So getting people excited because... When you're setting challenges, there's going to be growth. Um, okay, so that's that page done. The other one uh, that really resonated is being a leader is a lonely job. Okay, if we make friends in this business, it's amazing. And nine times out of ten, you do because everyone's pretty awesome. But... Not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to like the answers that you've got. And not everyone's going to like some of those tough conversations that you have to have. I think it's about um, never going into management mode. So never coming across as in I know more or I can do this better. But more like how about we try this? because what you've done isn't working or, you know, along those lines. Um, so really, I think, and, and it's something again that I did, I, I didn't call the people that I knew I needed to have that tough conversation with because there was that little bit of me that didn't want the confrontation. There was that other little bit of me that was like, no, when they're ready, they're going to come to me. Um, so, yeah, I think it's about, you know, this is a business at the end of the day um, and if you're going to be a leader within this business, then sometimes people aren't going to like you and that's okay. Um, now, the other thing is if you're at a point um, where you're coaching your team um, or doing any coaching calls, um, the one thing that I got out of it is give your team or the person that you're doing a call with at least one thing to go and do before the call, okay? Um, that, again, is going to gauge, you know, whether this person wants your time 
or deserves your time. Um, so, and then also it's going to give you some guidelines, you know, for that call to, to go by as well. So you might say to them, uh, go and write down, I want to know the most important five I am statements that mean the most to you. Um, I want to know what your goal was when you came into the business. Has that changed? What does your DMO look like? Those sorts of things, because sometimes it's not really about coaching or mentoring. It's just about being that person that gets them back into line again, takes them back to their why, and then asks that team member, the reason you came into this business, is that still important to you? Things change. People's lives change. They might go, you know what, no, it's not important anymore. Okay, okay, cool. You know, you're, we're here when you're ready to pick back up with this. So really just getting clear on where everyone's at, then I guess if you were to have a team member step back or, you know, someone run full force ahead, it's not going to be a shock um, because you're, you're always sort of finding out what your team wants, um, are they on track and those sorts of things. Um, now, these three things um, I would definitely write down if I were you. Um, you're a blessing in our team. Whether you do a little or a lot. So you're a blessing in our team, whether you do a little or a lot. You're a blessing in our team, whether you do a little or a lot. The next one is, you go at your own pace. So you go at your own pace. And the next one is, you're acceptable as you are. Okay, so you're acceptable as you are. So just such simple little sentences. I went to a couple of people that were a little bit quiet within the business that might have been doing the why can't I, why, why isn't my business moving this fast, you know, the whole com comparison game. Um, they might have been feeling as though they were failing because, you know, it, it wasn't working for them or whatever, whatever was going through their head. And those couple of little lines said to them um, completely changed their whole outlook. That little bit of endorsement that it's okay, you're okay where you're at. You're okay at the pace you're going. And you're enough. It doesn't matter what happens from here on in. You're enough just, just as you are. You know, it's about personal development and feeding your brain but it's not about changing yourself. Um, so you're acceptable as you are. So I really, really liked that. Um, the other one, this makes me giggle. Uh, I said to Jess, you know, I'm just trying to get balance, <coughs> excuse me, within my business. <clears throat> I need balance. Um, you know, with two young children, my partner's now home from the mines, a business, life. Um, we've got a menagerie of animals here as well. And I just said to her, you know, I'm, I, f I feel some days a little bit um, crazy, I guess is the only way to put it. I, I need to find balance. Now, when I was at NMT school, we called it strategic imbalance. So it's about really concentrating on the big rocks in your life. Okay, so that might be, you know, family, children, relationships, those sorts of things. And imagine you're those big rocks that are in a, in a big fish bowl, okay? You put the big rocks in, okay, and then we're going to put the smaller rocks in after that. So the smaller rocks are going to be, you know, your uh, after-school commitments, sporting events, you know, camping the family, whatever that is. And then juice plus is going to be the sand, okay? So imagine you tip the sand into that fishbowl. It's going to fit into all the cracks. Now, sometimes I need to remind myself about what are the big rocks in my life, what are the, the medium rocks, and what is the sand, 
because it's really easy for it to, to all take over and get all jumbled up and next thing you're being rocks are out of the fishbowl and there's no sand and the fishbowl's broken and it's just crazy. Um, so really having that strategic imbalance um, is it's okay because you're building a business, you're doing life, you're trying to fit it into your stolen moments um, and there's going to be times where you feel like it's a little bit crazy, but it's okay. Um, so the other one is decide your race, how you want to arrive and hit home. Because, um, you know, to be completely honest, there was a, a probably a month or two there um, arriving at SSC in between SSC and Q where I was just so focused on what needed to be done that everything around me was falling apart. And that's not how you want to arrive um, at NMD or wherever it is that you're heading. So really, I guess, going back to your roots getting really clear on your strategic imbalance, okay, and those big rocks, the little rocks and the sand is what's going to keep you grounded in this business, okay? Now, the other one is um, how can you do more better? So this is something I ask myself all the time, but I also have reached out to other uplines as well. So I reached out to Christine Drummond um, and I said, Christine, look, you know, I don't want you to tell me I'm a rock star. I don't want you to tell me I'm doing okay. I want you to tell me what you think I could do more of or do better. And it was actually really nice. I already had written a few things down that I thought that I could do more of or do better. But it was really nice to get that other input from someone that knows me well um, and knows my business as well. And, you know, she had said to me, Mel, I'd really love for you to see you do some more Zoom calls. Um, and, and that was pretty much, you know, the, the midst of it. So straight away, you know, I went and locked in my Thursday call, which I've opened up to you guys. Um, and that's a non-negotiable now. There, there isn't going to be a day uh, where I can't get on. Um, the only time it was cancelled was while I was at NMD school. Um, you know, otherwise, you, you know, you're getting someone in to cover you or guest speak, you know, if you can't be there at the start of the call, those sorts of things. So really deciding and committing um, is a massive, there's a massive difference between the two. A lot of people get stuck in decision mode, the deciding whether they're going <coughs> to get serious about the business or deciding whether they're going to show up a little bit more rather than just committing. This is what I'm doing. It's happening. I'm going to move everything else so that this can take place. So it's really, I guess, about bossing yourself around sometimes. Really just like, no, this is what's happening. Um, now, what else have we got? Okay, I love this. In the real world, if you ask for help, you're incompetent. In this world, if you don't ask for help, you will be incompetent. So true. So, so true. So I guess, you know, just goes back to what I said, don't be scared to reach out. Don't. Don't think about, you know, oh, they're not going to message me back or, oh, they're really busy. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they're probably really busy, but they'll reply to you when they have five minutes. Um, so a lot of that goes back to get out of your own way. I see a lot of people that have massive, massive potential, um, but the only thing that's stopping them is the fact that they're in their own way. They're either trying to reinvent the wheel. They're either really scared about the outcome. So that fear and doubt is kicking in. So for that small amount of time, they're letting these issues get in the way of their business growing. Um, so that's, that's really massive. I always sort of keep that in the back of my mind, um, especially with some challenges that you will come up against. Um, even today, 
I was on the phone to my partner and I said, I know that I just need to get out of my own way. Mm -hmm. So I know what I have to do, but I've got to process it and then I've got to go and put it into action. So the other one... Um, we might have to wrap it up there, Mel. Yeah, no worries. We've, just, no we've, worries. Got, to, we've got to start our guest event. Yes, um, you do. I told you I could talk forever. Oh, it's <laughs> awesome. I just want to keep listening to you. I know everyone else is really enjoying it too, and they'll all be going, oh, damn. <laughs> um, That's fine. That's fine. Perhaps, look, I would love to, and I know the team are really, really excited about having you on today um, because they've loved already what you've just shared about your own journey on our, um, you know, as you shared the Q&ND story over the last um, few calls that you've been on. I mean, we'd love to hear more from you and um, I've just, there's all the messages coming through now. Um, even, even just like some tips, I know a lot of people were saying some tips on time management because obviously, you know, being a busy mum and having... Um, you know, dad away from home, um, you've built your business so successfully and really quickly. So um, if you're up for that, maybe in the next month at some stage, maybe we could have um, a training call on another day where we have a bit more time. Yeah, yeah, of course. And definitely jump on the Thursday call as well because time management and lots of those little um, DMO tips and tricks and things like that is what I sort of mentioned on the Thursday call as well. So that's 3.30 p.m. your time, probably not the most amazing time. Um, but thank you so much for having me on. I hope that, you know, at least one of you um, got something out of that and then that means my yeah. job is done. Thank you so much, Mel. Really appreciate your time and for being so giving. Thank you so much. Everyone give Bye. Mel a wave. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. Mel. Thank you. <laughs> right, I'm going to hand over to Uh Just make sure. Hello. Right, spotlight you, Noreen. Hang on, I'll just...